Hey girl, what up? It's Minna. In this video, we are doing a midday skincare routine. And I know it's a little strange because the midday routine is going to be a combination in some way of a morning skincare routine and an evening skincare routine. The thing is, it's three o'clock and I just came home from the water park and I'm about to shower, but it's not yet bedtime. So I'm still going to do my skincare, obviously, after I shower. And I wanted to do this video to show you what I do midday when I shower midday. So let's say you've gone somewhere, you've come home, you want to shower, but it's not quite bedtime, this is an option of steps that you can take to do your skincare. Because at nighttime, there are certain things that you would do that you wouldn't do during the daytime. So make sure you watch my evening skincare routine video that may or may not be up by the time that you see this video. But if it's not, come back and watch that. FYI, I am what you might refer to as a skin influencer or a skincare enthusiast. I'm not an esthetician. I've just done a lot of research, been in lots of classes held by beauty brands. I've just done a lot of research and I've worked through my own skin as you can see, and I get lots of questions on my skincare. So I've taken a great interest in learning about skincare. So let me show you what I'm going to do for this midday skincare routine. Ow, ow. Oh, Marty. And this is a headband wig. I'll link it below in case you want it. I'm just wearing a swimsuit. Now, obviously I need to take off my eyelashes. Now I used to just rip them off, girl. And I'm not lying to you. Most days I still do that. Do I advise you to do that? Absolutely not. It is not a good thing to do. So I'm going to use Garnier Micellar Cleanser Water to loosen up the eyelashes a little bit before I take them off. Now, I do have contacts in, so I have to be careful with this because then it'll be like dripping into my eyes but just rub it along the lash band and that should loosen it up a little bit like imagine if you've been crying or you've heard of anyone say at their wedding day they were crying and their eyelash came off or just for whatever reason they were crying their eyelash came off any kind of liquid that touches the eyelash glue will usually loosen it up be it water if you're at the water park and you get splashed with water i'm just turning it over to the cleaner side and then cleaning off the other side or Tears, if you're wearing makeup and for whatever reason, you start to cry. Some of those tears can touch your upper eyelid and then end up loosening your eyelashes. Great, so now we have the eyelashes off. And what I have done on certain occasions is go ahead and clean off my eyes before cleaning it off with a cleansing balm and I'll show you that in a second. Or I've done the whole cleansing balm, wash my face, then come to clean my eyes. Because what happens is you're going to have leftover product in your waterline if you do wear eyeliner or around your eyelashes if you're wearing mascara, which I am wearing both of those. So because I need to really clean my eyes and detail them, if you will, I'm gonna remove my contacts right now because what will happen is that makeup will get inside my eyes and not irritate me, but obviously bother my contacts. So I'm taking those off and I just pop those out. I've worn, I've worn contacts since I was 15 or 14, one of those. So I'm just used to just taking them out that way. Fantastic. Now you're very blurry. So <laughs> I hope I'm in focus. Not extremely blurry, but you know, blurry enough. All right, so I did have an eye makeup remover that ran out. It was by Laura Mercier. Then I bought one from Sephora with the Sephora collection. Didn't like it, it was too oily. Some eye makeup removers will leave an oily residue, if you will. All the residue is a negative thing. It was an oily something afterward that I didn't like. You might like that though, if you find that your skin is dry. I'm combination, I just didn't like it, okay? So I could use micellar cleanser water to clean my eyes, or I suppose I could use a makeup wipe, which I don't use unless I'm doing makeup and I'm cleaning my hand. Let's just skip all that. I'm gonna do the cleansing balm, and then I will show you how I clean off the eye area to get the eyeliner and the mascara off, because no matter what you do, the cleansing balm just doesn't get everything. It gets most, but it doesn't get everything. All right, so the cleansing balm that I'm using today is this one by Espa. It's the Yuzu and Ginger Cleansing Sorbet. It's a balm to oil cleanser that melts away makeup and impurities. This one has a light ginger-esque scent to it. Doesn't irritate my skin. In fact, it does feel very luxurious. It reminds me of the Elemis cleansing balms. They are both in these heavy glasses and they just feel really great. What I love about cleansing balms is that it's basically a balm to oil, like it says. Take a little bit of it, although sometimes I do get really happy and take a lot. This is enough, but I just enjoy the whole, look at this. I enjoy the whole cleansing. Well, this is just mine, so I'm cross-contaminating. I understand that. <laughs> 
So this is so great. So put some in the palm of your hand and it feels really great. And then we are going to, let me get my face wash ready. So the face wash that I'm gonna use that I have right next to me is this Cetaphil Gentle Foaming Cleanser. Now one thing I used to feel like I needed to do was use a harsh cleanser to clean my face. But when you're using a cleansing balm to break everything down, rubbing it first like this, and then rubbing on your face, it's doing a lot of the work for you right away. So when it comes time to actually cleanse your face there shouldn't be a lot that the cleanser needs to do if you went in with a cleanser right away trying to wash your face you will find that you have to wash your face like six times and that's where you find people using actual cleansing wipes and makeup wipes and then the cleanser it's just a lot this I used to feel like was so messy I didn't want to do it like why would I want all this oil on my face but honestly this is the way that you really should be doing it ask any dermatologist or esthetician you do want to make sure you're doing this. Now, even if you don't have any makeup on, let's say that you just have on an SPF, you still want to do this because you want to break down the SPF that is on your face before you actually wash your face. Now that's because you should be using a gentle cleanser. So your gentle cleanser isn't going to be harsh enough or strong enough to break down your SPF. If you were using a harsh cleanser, then yeah, it's going to break down your SPF and it's going to leave you feeling dry. Whereas if you do this, and then use a cleanser. You don't need the cleanser to be so harsh. I've grown to love the way that this looks. Just so messy. It just looks like one <laughs> even canvas. Whereas before we had dimension and color and all of that. All right, I cannot open my eyes because I got this really in my eyes because I'm trying my hardest to break down the mascara and the eyeliner. I don't have any eyeshadow on today, but if I did, I'd be wanting to break that down as well. Going to the hairline because I do put my contour in the hairline. Now, normally what I do is I will take a handful of the cleanser and then go in the shower and then do this part and then rinse and then wash my face and then shower. But sometimes I do this here too. I'll do the cleansing balm here, wash my face here, do my skin. It just depends on what, what's going on. But I am going to wash my face at the sink to show you the whole shebang. Really wanna break all this down, girl. And then we're going to rinse this off. Rinse this off first before you use your cleanser to wash your face. And now with the Cetaphil Gentle Foaming Cleanser. I like, this is actually new. I usually use the regular one. This is a foaming one. I'm taking a lot just because it's gentle. Anyway, so I'm taking some of that. Rub onto the face. Now you see how my skin is clean, but what do you see? Eye makeup. No matter how much I was rubbing around my eyes, you know, we're not gonna rub in our eyeballs. So you still see eye makeup. We'll make sure to clean that at the end. So now you wash your face. And I will do the eyes in a second. Make sure you're washing, make sure you're getting your hairline, clean all of that off. And if you know me and if you've watched my videos before, I do co-wash my hairline in the shower. But again, we're doing this at the sink so you're not seeing that part. Now, obviously I'll wash my neck and, and my chest in the shower, but if you weren't gonna shower right now and you just wanted to wash your face for whatever reason, certainly feel free to bring this down to your neck and chest. So what I'm actually gonna do is rinse this off in the shower and then come back and finish. Okay, so I just showered and I was in the closet lotioning my body and then I put on this white satin pajama tunic, which I'll link below in case you want it. It's so comfy. I got it in a 2X because I want it to be roomy and spacious. The key is to make sure that you don't let your skin get dry. When your skin is dry, your products won't absorb into your skin as well as they could if your skin was damp. So I try to lotion myself really fast and or in the middle of it, spray my face with some sort of hydrating essence. An essence is a hydrating product. So what I have with me here here is this Innisfree Dewy Glow Mist. I mean, this is all dirty. <laughs> Ew. So I sprayed my face with that. I also hydrated my lips with this Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask, which I love. I have these in several different flavors or colors. This is the vanilla one. Very hydrating. It's not just for nighttime. I use it at any time of the day. Now, as you can see, I still have stuff on my eyes and the stuff is mainly eye glue. So that's when I come and further clean my eyes. And this is what I meant by, I'll either do this step in the beginning or at the end of it all. So micellar cleanser water on these cotton pads. We'll link everything below. And 
I'm just trying to remove the excess glue. And this part might look really bad, but it doesn't hurt. I do it all the time. I have to expose my waterline, basically. As gently as I can, I'm wiping to get the eyeliner off of my eye. And while I'm getting the eyeliner off of my eye, I'm also getting the mascara that's in the bottom of my lash off very gently. Now you may be wondering if you can just use a makeup wipe to do this part. I don't see why not. The key is not to use a makeup wipe on your whole face because then you might think that that's all you have to do when in actuality you really should do the cleansing balm and then actually cleanse your face. Okay, I had to look close to make sure I got everything. It's usually the glue. It's the glue that gets left over that is so annoying. Okay, my face has gotten dry again. Now, I love to steam my face. That I reserve for the evening time, not for the daytime. So I'll keep that for my evening skincare routine. Right now, we need to move into a serum. In the morning, you wanna focus on your morning type serums. For instance, niacinamide can be used either morning or night. Hyaluronic acid, same thing, either morning or night. But if we're thinking about vitamin C serum, that is a morning type serum, right? I have so many options to choose from. It is my job to try different types of products out. So in every single skincare routine, there are one or two things that I'm trying that I may not have tried in the last routine. It might sound confusing to you, but I can remember what I've used and what I haven't. And so I know what's happening. And also with that memory, I'm able to identify if something has broken me out because I know when I used it. I don't want to confuse you, okay? But just letting you know. So I do want to exfoliate today. I'm going to use this first A Beauty Facial Radiance Pads. These are a gentle way to exfoliate. So of course you can exfoliate by putting an acid, so a liquid on your face, letting it sit for maybe 10 minutes and then washing it off. You could use these pads that have two different sides to it. One has these little ridges, the other side is just smooth and you rub it all over your face, avoiding your eye area because your eye area is the most delicate part of your face. You don't want to put this exfoliating product on that. This is gentle enough for you to use twice a day if you felt like it. But whenever you're trying something new, if you're trying to follow what I'm doing or with any of your other influencers that, you're, that your favorites are doing, go slow. Just like when you're starting off a child with new foods, you're starting him or her off with one new food item every single week. That way, for a whole week, that way you know what, if anything, is causing any kind of inflammation, irritation, allergic reaction. Same range true for skincare. Now, when I say one thing all week, I want you to understand that if you're using an exfoliating product, although this can be used twice a day, every day, that might be too harsh for your skin. So you wanna start things off like every other day, maybe twice a week. Twice a week is a safe way to go about it, just to make sure that for you and for your skin, it's okay and it's not too much for you. You have to make sure that whatever you're doing is working for you. You may do everything that I do and then find that it's too much. So just be careful with that. Okay, so I am taking care of my dark spots and I'll get to that in a second, but when it comes to acne, my breakouts usually happen on my chin and that's an indication of hormonal acne. So what I've been using is this Peace Out Acne Serum only in my chin. The active ingredient in, the, in this is salicylic acid 2%. It's not drying like many of your other salicylic acid products are. This one also has niacinamide in it. So the great thing is that not only is it clearing out your pores, in cleaning out the bacteria where you have the pimples, but it's working to lighten up or take away the dark spots that come as a result of the acne. It's what the acne leaves behind, a dark spot, usually. Now, I've got a pimple right here that I am itching to wanna pick or whatever, but you really shouldn't pick them. I'm trying to tell you the right thing to do. It don't mean that I always do the right thing, but I'm trying to, you understand what I'm saying? The right thing to do is to leave it alone and to treat it. So treat the pimples with some sort of acne treatment like that serum, or you may wanna use, you know, these acne dots that you could put right on the pimple. In fact, I should do that right now, should I? This goes on dry skin though, shoot. Okay, I'll do that later later today. Just make sure you treat the acne, okay? Now, because it's daytime and I'm not doing my nighttime routine, I am going to put on my daytime eye cream, right? I know, it's strange. It's not the morning, but it's not evening. So I'm gonna use my daytime eye cream, which right now I'm using the Ula Henriksen Banana Bright Eye Cream, very creamy. Taking some of this on the ring finger, since that's the most gentle, starting on the outer part of the eyes. You do wanna make sure you put your eye cream on the top, and you don't have to really worry so much 
much about rubbing this everywhere. Just put it in place. Put it in place, let it absorb, and let it do its job. My eyes are irritated because I was wiping so much, but it'll go away. Fantastic. Now, I've really been enjoying this First Aid Beauty Facial Radiance Dark Spot Serum. The names are so long. Now, if you want to purchase anything from First Aid Beauty, you can use my code MINA on their website and you can save some mulattoes. So feel free to do that on firstaidbeauty.com. The links of all these products will be below if you are interested. So this is a niacinamide dark spot serum. And if you notice, I'm not sure how long you've been around, comment below and let me know when you, start, when you, when you found me, but you may have noticed a while ago I used to have dark spots on my cheeks my forehead it wasn't a lot but it was enough but ever since I've really gotten a handle of my skincare routine believe me I've made mistakes okay in trying to figure all this out I have made mistakes I have like ruptured my skin and I have rosacea so just forget about it like I've used stuff and I'm like oh no my skin's starting to itch oh no I'm having a reaction oh no look at my face right so I've been there but ever since I've gotten everything down, your girl don't have many dark spots. The area that I do get them is my chin because that's where I get the breakouts and then I sit here and I'm picking and, punk and punching and all these things. Don't do that. I'm gonna work on not doing that. Let's work on that together, okay? Together, so that when the pimple goes away, because we're treating it the right way. We maybe won't have the dark spots as a result. I don't know, is that the case? You don't mess around with your pimples. Will it go away without leaving a dark spot? That's a question, I'm gonna figure that out. I hope the answer is yes, gotta figure that out. And then let's see, I, again, I have so many options here. It's just a matter of what I'm feeling on that given day. Let's see, I could do another serum. I have been using this In Beauty Project Green Machine Skin Transforming Oil Jelly Serum. My, my, my. It gives you the look of clear, healthy, and vibrant skin and filters away congested, dehydrated, tired skin. My skin is dehydrated. It's not dry, meaning patchy, flaky. It's just dehydrated. So I'll do all of this. You might look at me and be like, that's a lot of steps. To me, it's not because I'll do all of this. And then two hours from now, my skin will be like, kind of feeling a little stiff. Like, okay, where's the, where's the hydration? What happened? So I need a lot of hydration, water. So it's water that my skin is not retaining well. It's not oil that my skin is not retaining well. It's the water. We're getting technical here, but that's what that means. That's what dehydrated skin means. Your skin is not retaining water. Now, after that, we do need SPF. And sometimes I'll use a moisturizer that has SPF in it. Other times, I'll do a moisturizer and then the SPF separately. It really depends on what I have here, what I finished, what I'm trying out, so on and so forth. But whatever floats your boat, do that, okay? Be it a chemical SPF or a mineral SPF. And take a look at this picture here to explain those things to you. I prefer to use a chemical SPF because I don't wanna have to play around with whether or not I'm gonna have a white cast. Like I don't have that time, you see what I'm saying? So I go with chemical and I haven't found any issues with that. Let me use this. Oh, I don't know. See, one thing to also think about is how your products are going to react to one another. So what I'm saying is because I'm using this Believe Beauty Hydrating Gel Cream, and this is my third day using it, but I normally use it at nighttime. It isn't that hydrating for me, for my level of dehydration. It is not that hydrating, but I'm still working through it and seeing what combination of products works best with this to really get a sense of whether or not I like it or love it or don't like it. So the reason why I'm saying that is because this cream obviously does not oh it says it it's a refreshing gel that offers lightweight hydration no wonder reading is so fundamental i'm sitting here trying to i'm like this is not hydrating me how i need it because it's a lightweight hydration i don't need that i need intense it's very fragrant it's like a perfume anyway if you like lightweight hydration this is available at dollar tree give it a shot if you want to try it's very fragrant if you have fragrance allergies or aversions then you don't want that it smells like a perfume so now i'm not going to use that anymore that explains it i was like why am i not hydrated enough like what all right, so I am gonna use the Supergoop Unseen Sunscreen SPF 40, but I need a moisturizer, see? You do your serums, then your moisturizer, 
than your SPF. Or you do your serums and your moisturizer slash SPF. It depends on what you are actually using. I was using the SPF moisturizer and sunscreen by Supergoop, but I finished it and now I'm trying the unseen one, but I need to find my moisturizer. So the other moisturizer that I have here with me is the Sunday Riley Vitamin C Rich Hydration Cream. This is a moisturizer with vitamin C, nothing wrong with that. So let's do that and then we'll do unseen sunscreen on top. The already, my skin feels dry. Like already, I feel like I could use more hydration. I'm not even kidding. You know what? I'm taking more of this cream because I'm not even lying to you. My skin feels like it just inhaled everything that I just put on it. So that tells me that I should, I should have used, should have and could have used hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid draws in moisture. So I like to layer that on, two layers of that, and then do a moisturizer. And it feels really, really good. That's good for morning or nighttime. If you find that your face is dehydrated. And the thing is, you know, when I do my makeup, I like to be matte, right? But that has nothing in a sense to do with this. And what I mean is I still want to be uber hydrated because my face is dehydrated. But once I've gotten all of this hydrated, when I wait 20 or so minutes for it to absorb well enough and then go do my makeup, then I can do my mattifying primer and my mattifying foundation and go on from there. So it's totally okay for you to want a matte look but then still hydrate your skin. You want your skin beneath the matte foundation to still look good, okay? All right now, do we see hydration? Yes, we do. Fantastic, now the last part is the Supergoop Unseen Sunscreen. This morning, I this is waterproof and sweat resistant. This morning, I felt like I put too much. You're supposed to do the two fingers. This formula is just so, I don't know, man. It felt like velvet. It felt like it mattified my face, although I do believe they have a mattifying sunscreen. It took away the shine. I don't know. I'm still feeling this particular one out. So far, I like the lotion. I don't know about this one. Here we go with the two fingers worth. This is clear, so you may or may not see this. You do wanna make sure you have two fingers worth. Rub it into your fingers, not the palms. I cringe when I see people using their palms to apply their face products. Use your fingers. You're getting it into your palms and absorbing the product into your hands for no reason. Stick to the fingers, even when you're applying, okay? Like, you don't need your palms on your face. So what? Uh, why? Now, some products don't work well with others, so you might get peeling where it starts to crumble. <laughs> I hope this doesn't crumble because the formula of this sun unseen sunscreen feels like velvet. Like, it's just very unique. <laughs> This is a clean chemical sunscreen, so it has chemical ingredients, but it's clean. Not really sure what that means, but that's what the packaging says. All right, I'm not gonna rub this too much. I'm just placing it where it needs to go because again, it just has a very unique texture to it. I can't explain it. <laughs> can't explain it. Now, you should put sunscreen on your eyelids, which I usually forget. So let's do that. Let me just do it like this again. I don't want any of that peeling going on. So let's just pat. Now, I don't have my glasses on. If we're having peeling, you need to tell me. Does this look crazy? I'm looking in the mirror. <laughs> I'm looking in the mirror. All right, aside from my obnoxious pimple, we look great. We look good to go. So that is my midday skincare routine. Honestly, resembles my morning routine, except one or two things. So I still am going to do a morning skincare routine video. So comment and let me know if you found this video helpful. Do you use any of these products? Give the video a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed. And as always, girl, I tell you, thank you for watching my video. Thank you for sticking around. Join my text community. Link is in the, in the I almost want to say link is in the building. Link is in the description box. And let me know if you're going to be trying any of these products out. As always, thanks for watching. Bye.